Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Kermit Trent. Today we're going to paint all my favorite purple, purple flowers. We've got crocuses and tulips and asters and lilacs and hydrangeas, bluebells and lavender and cosmos and anemones. So let's get started. Okay, to start, I will draw out these flowers pretty quickly. Um, you know, you can just get reference like these pictures I just download on the internet just look at them for reference but you can't actually trace on them if you're going to paint it and try and use it as your own because that's copyright infringement you look at them for reference and you draw it on your own so that's what pictures are for um, I have just a piece of paper here I'll just use my sharpie pen and we'll get started the crocus is pretty simple it's like a U and then you pull a curved line down and a curved line down and one in the back put a little stamen in the middle and then draw the stem like so the anemone is kind of like a oval center I show I have an actual tutorial on this on my channel scroll back and look at the flowers and you'll see it and just gonna go like this little petals here and they kind of overlap and underlap here simple like that and what makes it special is when you paint it like here when you paint it you get those little knobbies that go into the center that really makes it differentiate between just a regular petal flower um, just a Cosmo I have another tutorial on that just a little round center kind of like wider petals for like a daisy a little ridges on the end so kind of like daisy petals that's a cosmo uh, the lilac is a little trickier you kind of making like a stem like this you know and then you pull a leaf here bring me a leaf here I've shown you how to draw leaves and lilacs are just like four little petals with a little dot so you kind of want to do the bunch of these like this overlap and underlap next to each other but on top they're like they're just buds you see like little buds you know if you ever look at lilacs in the store they're not kind of fully bloomed all the way up so you do all the little petals here overlap them Maybe put some buds down here. I'm drawing this pretty fast, but you get the idea. That would be the lilac. Um, an aster is just like a simple round petal, with really pointy, small, skinny petals. Tulip, again, with this U shape. You're gonna pull this in closer and do like a little ridge even the back. I'm not gonna show the stem and the tulip and then the stem and then their leaves are like those long pointy leaves like that. Uh, a bellflower just sounds like what it is. I mean, a bell. So you're doing like an upside down curved U, pull a little bees in there upside down and yes I'm drawing this freehand but I've been drawing since I was five so I can do that and the little leaves that's the bellflower lavender is very simple there's just lines like that and you do like little little I don't know call them petals they're like little seeds kind of looking thing kind of what um wheat would look like but only small and short and purple and then the harder one obviously would be the hydrangea because hydrangea petals the, the flower leaves they're like on top of each other so drawing it's a little tricky even for myself um i'm just used to painting it kind of loose and blobbly <laughs> if that makes any sense but if you wanted to draw it it's a four petal flower like so, with a little thing in the middle. 
But the trick about this particular plant flower is that they're on top of each other, again, like the lilac. And you're just building on top of it. So if you wanted to paint it realistically, you do like that. And then you put the big leaf. Hydrangeas have those big leaves with the, the veins in them. Again, the four petal, and they're underneath each other. You know how you see hydrangea, they're all overlapping underneath, like so. That's a big stem, because the hydrangea. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Nope, those are all the flowers that I'm gonna be painting. So there you go, quick little tutorial how to draw it. I, am, I was starting to do a drawing tutorial for all these and like a nice drawing botanical tutorial, but I just kept on messing up. So we're just gonna go right to painting. So let's get started with the painting. Okay, so I've already drawn my flowers on my paper. I have Arches 100% Cotton Cold Water Press Paper. Um, see what it looks like? Looks like that. This is the, uh, I guess 10 by 14. Oh no, sorry, 9 by 12 <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to be using several brushes. I'll start with my Princeton Long Round uh, Velvet Touch Brush. I have my paints over here. I have a violet here, a lot ultramarine, there's an indigo, hooker's green, there's a sap, sap green, hooker's green right here. I'm primarily using that and then it's like over here in this little section I have this bright wild rose Dr. P.H. Martin. So if I feel like the purple is a little too muted and muddy, add this bright color to it and just pops it right up. I'm gonna have my water. Oops, goodness gracious. <laughs> Real time. Paper towel here. And oh, today I got in the mail. I ordered this new palette. It's Medine watercolor palette. Comes with all the little things that go inside. And I think I might do a video about this tomorrow and I'm going to put all my paints in there and show you how to set up the palette. This looked great for me online. It looked like the perfect size. It flips open to, uh, you know, have one section for all colors in the side and the side. I think I'll do a video on it. What do you think? Okay, so I've drawn out my designs on my Arches cold water press paper. I've got my paints here. I have my ultramarine, violet, indigo blue, hooker's green, sap green. Over here in this little pool, I have this wild rose from the Dr. P.H. Martins. I've shown you this many times. They come like this. Um, I'm gonna have, th this is the Arches Cold Water Press Paper I talk about all the time. If you wanna know what it looks like on the front, it's like this. It's nine by 12. Paper towel, gotta have paper towel. Water jars up here. Uh, I could show you that, but then you can barely see the flowers. I got various brushes next to me. And I'm going to be using, to start with, the Princeton Long Round Number no. 8 Velvet Touch Brush. These brushes are great. Look at that point. It's fantastic. Um, someone had asked how they keep their brushes nice from getting ruined. Well, obviously, after you finish painting, you have to swish your brush in the water, clean it, like dab in paper towel, but leave it to dry flat like this before you stick it in your container. If you don't do that, the water goes into the belly. It takes the shape out of your brush. So it has to dry completely laying flat. That's why you always see my brush is kind of flat over here. And then when you you want to put them away and make it nice and neat, you stick them in your, your container upright. But you have to make sure they're completely dry or you're ruining your brushes. And never mix paint, like harsh like mixing with your nice brushes. I have a crappy brush right here. I've shown this many times. And I mix the paint. Once it's kind of loose and wet, you could use the nicer brush, but I wouldn't suggest it for it's like when you're trying to like reconstitute your watercolor. I mean, even if you spray it with water and it's getting a little wet, it still has to be mushed around like this. And using a really good brush to do this is like a sin because you're killing it. <laughs> And you're gonna have to pay for more brushes. Anyway, so I'm gonna start on the crocus over here. I'm getting a good amount of water on my brush, mixing up the color that I like. And I'm just gonna put that on. 
see has a nice point to it this brush is fantastic for petals and leaves it's just great I'm just gonna fill this guy in this is kind of like a I don't know like a pinkish purple it's not like a I added some of that bright pink to it because the crocus is like the first flower you see at springtime you know spring is here when you see this guy I know I get excited <laughs> living up north in the East Coast you kind of can't wait for it but today is 60 degrees and it, the wind is blowing it's it's crazy it feels like it's spring so I'm not gonna fill this all the way in yet because I need that I don't want to bleed I'm gonna fill this part in and leave that little section where the stamen was out Now it's a little too much water on the paint. I need a little more concentrated. It's still a little watery, but what I'll do is I'll soak, like I'm taking it up like a mop and putting it on the paper towel and taking off the excess. So we're just filling this in for now. We're not gonna put in any shadows quite yet. I'll let this dry. Work, work on the stem. I can use a nice brush on this because this is really loose paint. It's not hard. And I'm just mixing the sap green with the hooker's green. I'm getting a nice combo green. Getting it all on that brush. And then just taking the brush. See, has a nice point. Oh, bled into it. Well, that's fine. Just go straight down. Clean up that brush. We'll move on to another flower. We'll come back to that one. The anemone. Now I want this one really deep, dark. So I'm going to grab more of the ultramarine, a little bit of the indigo, and the violet. So the deep purple. It's a blue, deep purple. These flowers, gorgeous. These are fairly simple flowers to actually do. What makes them stand out is when you do that, the middle um, center, and you have those little nodule beady things that, are, that make that flower unique. I don't know what you would call them. We're just filling this in. So the pointy brushes take a little time to fill in. I'm like the flat rounder brushes. I could switch it out, which I might do, just to speed up this process. So we're just filling in this petal in this deep bluish purple. Kind of flat. We'll add in some deeper tones. I can go back in and add a little deeper and an edge like that. Just putting it in here. I have a lot of these flowers in some of my paintings that I've done for clients. I don't know if you know that, I mean, if you look at my, my about page, I primarily license my art. So I create designs that manufacturers put on their products. I've been doing it for 20 something years. In the beginning, I was a children's wear designer. Okay, so we're gonna move on, let that dry and move on to the aster. And we'll come back to the other ones because they're drying. That's how you do a bunch of ones. This is kind of that purplish, pinkish color. So I'm taking some of that bright pink and putting it in there. Again, these are just pointy little... This brush, as I'm going to show you. Making a stroke and then a stroke and just hit in the middle. Stroke, curve, stroke, curve, stroke, hit the middle. Curve, curve, and just fill in the middle. Curve, 
Baker of Villanville. It's very therapeutic. The pointy brush comes in handy in this guy. You might not even have to do strokes. You could just actually kind of just take the brush, push it down, pull it back up, and you've got that aster looking petal. That's what's good about this brush. Like I said, pull it, push it down, pull it back up. It's a one stroke kind of thing. Or you can make it two strokes. Different strokes for different folks. Remember that TV show? <laughs> okay. It's getting a little too bluish. I'm going to put that pink back in there. But this is like a pointy. If you hear that, it's so windy out. Even if I did a voiceover, you'd still hear it. I've tried doing voiceovers. They must go to a soundproof room, some of these people who have them. Because it's chaotic 24-7 in my studio. Okay, now we can go back to the crocus and add in some detail. Take some of the paint off. This is what this brush is great for. That point makes those little lines perfect. Putting a shadow on this one because it's behind that petal. And same thing with this one. Still keeping it fairly light. You don't want it dark, dark, because this is a very light flower. So that green got in there. So I'm going to clean this brush off. I'm going to go in there with the clean and just wipe it up. Like a mop. Let's see? Get rid of that and add that purple back in. And go with that and clean the brush off and I'm going to add that yellow stamen. Mixing the crocus now, it's bleeding a little bit, that's okay. I can go clean that up. Yeah, we'll go fix that. This stuff happens. I'll let that dry a little bit and fix it. And to the middle of the an enemy. That's going to be like black with indigo combination in the middle. I always leave a halo like you see here when I'm doing this particular flower. Just the way I like to do it. And then you grab it's great with a point again. Little point lines out here. Do the little balls. Now the anemone was looking flat. See how flat that color looks? Clean up my brush. I'm going to add some of that detail with the darker purple in there. I probably should have did that before I did the black, but it's okay. Let me get some of the detail. Alright, the Cosmo. This is that pinkish purple. I'm going to fill this in, leaving the middle empty. That's where the yellow is going to go. So fill this in really quickly. It's like flat ends to the 
petals. They're not as rounded. I have a tutorial on the Cosmos. It wasn't seen to be popular, but maybe no one was looking for Cosmos. I like them in the summertime. I think they're pretty. This is getting a little muddy. So we're just pulling out these petals. We'll add the lines when that dries. That's what kind of makes it a Cosmo, those long rigid lines in there. The aster is fairly dry, so we can add the yellow center. When that dries, if you want to add some deeper tones of the purple inside, closer to the the middle, you can do that. I'm going to do the lilac. This is a combination purple, more bluish purple. I always like mix the paint and then dab it on my paper towel. Try and get, I don't want too much paint on my brush. So I think on this one, I'm not going to use the pointy brush. I want to fill it in faster. I'm going to use a flatter round brush. I'm going to use the Grumbacker 10. So it's a wider brush, but it will fill it in faster. And just those four petal points. Really simple. Just keep filling those in. The center of these little petals, we're going to have a, like a deeper, darker purple. And the buds should be a little bit darker too. I love the smell of lilacs, springtime. There's a lilac festival in Boston, and I've yet to go to it. Actually, no, I did go last year. Sorry. Last year or the year before? There's one year I couldn't go because it was crappy weather. We did go two years ago. That's right. And on the way to it, got in a car accident. <laughs> so yes, we put the little buds up here. We put some buds down here. It's at this place called the Arnold Arboretum. And it's beautiful. There's so many varieties of lilacs. If you're in the Boston, I think it's the first weekend of May or second, maybe it's Mother's Day weekend or something like that, that they have it. It might be Mother's Day weekend. And we went and you can bring your dog. Okay, so I filled that mostly in. I'm gonna grab some, actually for this one, brown, which is Front umber, raw umber, mix a little green in there. Just go inside here and add that stem. Now do you know when you have stem, like woody stem flowers, you're supposed to smash the stem and the end to get the water to go into the flower so it won't die. I learned this from my aunt who used to be a florist. So, lilac is one of those flowers. If you don't smash the stem, it will not receive the water and the flower will die. So we'll get the green stem here, and then we're gonna make the petal, and leaf. And there you go, lilac. 
let's go on to the bellflower. I'm going to keep using the same brush, actually. This is a bluish purple, like a periwinkle. Fairly simple. Pretty, cute little flower. I'm going to have to use this more in my paintings. I like this color flower. Just fill that in. I can switch over to the brush that I was using before. For its stem. It's very pointy. It's perfect for this. It has like a little green petal connection on top. I can use the same brush to do my lavender. I'll do my brownish green stem. And then I'll use this brush to make the lavender pods, pods, petals, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. It's a fatty brush. Just go like that. It's really simple. Lavender is an easy one to do. I'd like to do this one. This guy, I'm going to add some tones. Let them bleed. The hydrangea. Moving on to the hydrangea. Now, I know I drew out those petals, and you know, if you want to sit there and do all the details of the little things. You go ahead. I am going to make hydrangeas easy for you. Painting wise, it's different than drawing. I'm going to wash in the color. Like I said, I like a bit blobby. I don't do hydrangeas. Just going to wash in this purple. Because I really think you can figure it out that it's a hydrangea. It is not rocket science. <laughs> and then I add more ultramarine, get that bluish color going in there. I think it's a combination of colors. I'm just dabbing it. It's one of my favorites. I have the blue, forever blue ones in my yard. And then for the petals, the leaves, those big leaves. You can add the veins in after this, you flood in the paint. Set off light and go a little darker. They are pretty dark, the leaves. But this is a nice, easy, loose way to do it. So I'll go in and bleed in the dark. Under where the flower would be for shadow. pushing it down around. If it bleeds into the purple, that's fine. I'm going to add the stem. Oh, that was a little too bright green. I'm going to add some brown to that. Let that dry a little bit and we'll come back. And we have 
the tulip. This could be bright purple, dark purple, you know, tulips come in all different colors. Just fill this in easily. Again, I'm going to wait till this dries to get the back part of it. So I'll work on the stem. I'm not going to touch it close to it so it's going to bleed. There's a long pointy leaves. It's going to be tulip season before you know it. <laughs> In my mind anyway. touched it so it bled a little bit but that's okay and add some tones of values if you don't have all the colors even if you have the primary colors you can mix up pretty much everything except purple is tricky you kind of need a pink to make a good purple a, a red some of these reds like I have this red here cadmium red hue is too orange in value so that's not going to come up like purple. It's going to come out like brown. You're going to need a rose. A rose and then ultramarine and you'll have a great purple. You always have to have a rose. And I say you need two yellows. I have two yellows. I have the medium yellow and then I have the cadmium yellow. These are just cheaper ones, but um, yeah, because one has that orange tone to it. I mean, you could add red to it to make it the same thing. Always the primary color paints will be more, most expensive. You wonder why is that red so expensive? Red is actually the, one of the most expensive paints. So I'll go back into the lilac and filling in this leaf darker. I'm going to go up to the Cosmo and add the yellow and then the lines. Oops. My yellow got all muddy. I have to fix it. All right. Yellow center. And we're going to take those purple lines. And just go all the way down. To the middle. And then you have your cosm. Now the yellow is bleeding again. You can't tell it was a full moon last night, right? Same as Aster, you want to go in and add a little more darker value going towards the center. Too much water, on, too much paint on that. Doesn't look so flat this way. And then Go back to our tulip. And just that in the hundred. See? The yellow got on my brush. And now it got all brown. Yellow and purple make brown. So I have to fix it. Filling in the back. I'll pull this down. The hydrangea, I'll add some more values to this one. As it's drying, I see, oh, a little too blue. To pop in some darker tones on one side, like a shadow. It wouldn't make sense to have it all up, all around like that.
and then on the, the leaf, I'll go in and add those veins. The concentrated. It's like a sap green with some brown. Some simple veins. Same thing with the lilac. Add the veins. It's a little wet still. That one's a little wet, so I'm not going to touch that one. Tulip here. I'm going to add darker value where it meets the tulip. And down in here. Where the stems overlap. I'm going to fix the crocus. Because that yellow bled into everything. There you go. Crocus is fixed. Now I'm just going to work on the tulip a little more. Almost, I think everything is almost done. Oh, we have to fill in a lilac center. So we can do that now while the tulip's still drying. Just a little dot, darker purple in the middle of these lilac flower petals. See that? And you can tell it's a lilac. If you wanted to go into the lavender, put some darker shades on one side of it. Do that. And the bluebell. Darker tones where it meets the stem. It's coming down. And then the tulip. Put those little vein lines that you see in the tulip. And then of course it'll be a little bit darker on the bottom. to it. Well, I think we covered everything, except maybe this one needs the little veins, but you can do that. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a little long, but what can I tell you? And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I will try and do some drawing tutorials. Today was a disaster trying to make them, but you know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to keep doing them. And uh, I think tomorrow I'll do the unveiling of my new palette exciting and how to put it together um, people wonder how do I do it what colors should I stick next to each other well I'll show you what I do so thank you so much for stopping by have a great day